I hear this a lot from us iPad users. I got an iPad and I just don't use it as much as I should, or I just don't use it at all, or the echoing calls of the fact that the iPad can never quite replace a laptop. And you know what? This is just the wrong approach to this problem. Whether you've had the iPad Pro for years or you just bought that spangly new iPad Air, I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of your iPad, even if you're just a casual user. It's amazing what a little extra know-how can do to truly get the best value out of this expensive piece of glass. Organize your screens by use case and focus. To truly make the most of your iPad, start by thinking in terms of widgets, pages, and focus modes particularly since Apple's iOS 15 updates really push this further. Creating a page for areas of your life can be a great way to find focus, minimize distraction, and increase functionality. I have a work and a play page. So content creation, freelance work, admin stuff, all sits on page one, and then all things fun and media browsing sit on page two. I love having a Google Cal view on my first home screen and my day-to-day -day productivity apps. My most important widgets though have to be for Notion. I run my life and work from a Notion second brain system that I built completely from scratch. If you've not been on the channel before, I've optimized it for my mobile and iOS use, and my Notion task manager and content creation dashboard are particularly important to me sitting at the top of the page. So make sure to check out my Notion playlists, templates, and workspace tours after this. Now, if you want to go further in home screen design, you could use the Shortcuts app or third-party apps like Widgetsmith to customize the aesthetic design of your pages. Now, if you like the look of mine, check out my minimal iPad setup tutorial next by the description on how to get started. Next, let me tell you a couple of quick capture hacks that really have transformed how I use mine. Capturing anything as a text note is possible with your camera app. Have you spotted this? Long pressing on the screen when your camera is focused on text allows you to scan it and translate it into text into an app. And it also turns out that your iPad through the Files app is a document scanner. Yeah, so for quick and accessible ways to create PDF documents, just hold your finger on a blank space on the Files app and then select Scan Documents. You can capture multiple scans and then turn them into a single document. Love it. A great secret of the Apple Pencil is the Quick Note function. Just tapping on the lock screen with the pencil brings up your Notes app and you're away. More Apple Pencil tricks in a few minutes. Speaking of note taking, you have to explore using the iPad as a notebook. It's the best thing I think the iPad does for the majority of users. We all need to make lists, write something down or sketch something. I love how flexible note taking can be with the Apple Pencil and the fact that you can transform written notes into typed text like this. Add a paper-like cover for an even more pleasing tactile feedback to your writing and drawing experience. Plus, the added bonus, it keeps that glass nice and protected. You can take this to the next level with the premium note-taking apps like my favorite, GoodNotes 5. Organize your notes, folders, and workbooks in a really customized way. That's the thing I love about GoodNotes. I've literally storyboarded an entire theater production that I'm working on in it, and it allows you to customize the look of the paper to your needs. It also has the added bonus of allowing you to resize, move, and adjust things after you've done it. It even has an opportunity to add videos and images. It's a great investment. Oh, hi. New to the channel, I'm Simon. I'm going for cheese here, by the way. Hit the like button and consider subscribing too. I'm collecting great ideas, tools, and tech to help simplify your life. Let's carry on. Next up, Make sure you get to grips with multitasking. It's easy to forget that this is a key feature of the iPad. Using split screens massively improves your workflow and the possibilities of the tablet. My favorite tip for using multitasking is to use the search bar to find apps that you want to open quickly and then dragging them down into either split screen or slide over views. The slide over stack features also are super helpful for managing things like files or music. But for now, let's just say there's a whole video Video on these kind of workflows that you can watch after this one. Make sure you use the cross device features. If you own a recent Mac computer, connecting your iPad via sidecar in the display options makes for a great secondary display for your Mac 
And with certain apps, it's a great way to utilize the touch features of the Apple Pencil in high level Mac OS apps like Photoshop. Even more excitingly, make sure to set up universal control where you can share your keyboard and mouse across both devices, a Mac OS and an iOS device. I love it. It's a great way to literally drag files from my computer to my iPad and vice versa. And if you need a hand, I have linked instructions to setting up universal control in the description. Now then, we can go a step further. Did you know you can even copy and paste between devices that are signed into the same Apple account without even pairing them? Uh, yeah, you can. Just select and copy the text on your iPad and then paste it, for example, on your phone. You can even do this with drawn content in notes by using the lasso tool. Select and hold, press copy, go over to the other device and repaste. Amazing. Speaking of which, let's talk accessories. And the Apple Pencil 2 has to be your first go-to accessory. It transforms the iPad into a truly unique piece of tech. Not your laptop, definitely not your phone. A couple of quick tips. Swiping up from the bottom corner with the Apple Pencil is a fast way to take a screenshot. It will also allow you to seamlessly annotate using the markup tool, super helpful. In drawing based apps, try holding the pencil on the screen and letting it set the shape that you've drawn into a more perfect shape. <laughs> and of course, using Scribble. Writing into the search bar or well, most text input boxes will allow you to use the Scribble functions, immediately turning your handwriting into text. A wiggly line over the top of it will delete it and there are quite a few more commands to get the hang of. You might want to invest in a good USB-C adapter if you're serious about using your iPad for bigger tasks. Plugging in an external like monitors, mics or hard drives make your iPad a much more serious tool. This hyperdrive dock is my favourite, super portable and great for directly accessing images and footage from my trusty Fuji X-T4 camera. Adding an external SSD like the SanDisk Extreme Pro Drive I've got here can also make a difference if you're wanting to work with larger files and keep your iPad storage clear for better flexibility day to day. An external mouse and keyboard turn the iPad into a serious portable desk setup. There are many options out there from the native folio cases and magic keyboards, but I love using my Keychron mechanical keyboard at home with this Arc mouse for a super tactile experience. Beyond this, a great desk stand or even an external monitor are great next steps if you're getting serious about using the iPad as your main device, as many people do. I did it for two years. I love this Magplot stand by ChargeM Pro. It's a really pleasing kind of echo of the studio display design uh, and I think it can make your desktop look pretty clean. Connect a gaming controller. I think the best games are the ones based purely on the iPad. The Pathless is my recommendation of a cool place to start. And if you're embracing services like Google Stadia or Xbox Cloud, you can even get some proper console level titles there too. Although you need a good internet connection and maybe you should stick to the arcade because there's some good stuff in there. Embrace premium apps. I know for many, after shelling out some serious paper on a new iPad. This might be the last thing that you want to do, but embracing the paid apps transforms how you see the potential for this device. And whilst those first purchases can seem like a lot, you probably will notice the difference that you get from them. So I paid $30 for the iPad's best video editing software, in my opinion, LumaFusion, when I started my channel. I edited 50 videos on it, and it's genuinely been the best value, brilliant experience I've had. That's a tenth of the cost of Final Cut Pro, and it's very similar, so it was easy to transfer to Final Cut. The same goes for apps like Affinity Photo, professional photo editing software that is, in my opinion, better than Photoshop for just $22. Fine. When it comes to finding more apps and tools to make the most of the iPad for all things productive and creative, you should watch one of these videos next. Well, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.